I just learned that you can have as much, if not more, fun in a Navy. Ford invited us to Seattle to check out the Mustang Mach-E Rally. It's more rugged, it's faster, and it's aiming to reshape the narrative of what an EV, and more importantly, a Mustang, can do. The Mach-E Rally is as sporty as an EV can get. On road, you can expect a zippy, powerful, sleek looking ride that's guaranteed to grab attention. You know, if you like that type of thing. But forget all that. Today we're getting a little dirty and going rallying. Today we're at Dirtfish. We're going to do some off-roading. I'm very excited. Ahead of rallying, we spent a few hours with the 2024 Mach-E GT to see how a standard performance car is different from a performance rally car. For reference, the GT is a bit more affordable than the Rally and more comparable to the Tesla Model Y's performance trim. I'll link my hands on with more info on the GT in the description below. What I wasn't expecting is that the interior of the car looks just like the Mach-E GT. Straight down to the Bing & Olufsen speakers, this 15-point inch display, the secondary display. But there is one difference, and that is this wheel. You'll see this can go all the way around, and you only need a half turn to get back to center. That's typical of a rally car. You don't want to be driving with your hands crossing over. You want to be like this. But that's not all. Big difference between the Mach-E GT and Mach-E Rally is a dedicated rally mode that's made precisely for off-road racing. We're sending it. I think I learned how to drive rally style. I did hit a cone, I did hit a cone, but you know what? We're still here, we're alive. <laughs> that was so fun, man. Even at the scariest moments of that ride, I knew I could trust the car without even having driven it before. No point did it feel like I was losing control. I didn't have that moment of panic that I've had when I'm, you know, slipping and sliding on a rainy road in just a normal car. I guess that's the benefit of a rally car. So it's really cool that Ford is now giving customers that option. This all-wheel drive thrill ride is powered by Ford's new in-house manufactured e-motor that helps this car navigate rough terrains with 480 horsepower and 700 pounds of torque. More on that motor a little later in this video. Meanwhile, the rallycross tuned Magna Ride dampening system, Brembro front brakes, and Ford performance seats helped even a rally novice like me conquer the course. That said, designing a rally car meant making some important exterior alterations different from what you'll see on the regular Mach-E or Mach-E GT trims. Couple things special about the Mach-E Rally. We have 19 inch rally wheels. You can't tell right now, but they're normally white and that's indicative of the rally line. I happen to love the contrast, especially with this yellow paint. Speaking of the yellow paint, how does it stay safe from gravel? different debris. It has a special coating on it that even when all this mud is washed off, we should still have that perfect yellow sheen. Underneath also has a special aluminum protective layer. That means all the components that are inside, including your battery, will be protected as gravel and dirt is being kicked up. With all this mud up front, it looks like kind of a speckled paint effect. It looks really cool. This protective grill shield has fog lamps integrated. There's also a recovery hook and a much higher approach angle for the front splitter. This is how you know you did rallying right. As all great things in life, my stint as a rally driver had to come to an end. With how exhilarating it was, I can see why someone might opt for a rally. Out on the road with a mudless Mach-E rally, I got to see how it transitions from a racing car to something you drive around on the daily. Just shy of $60,000, you're gonna pay to have fun. 
What Ford has been really excited about this year, specifically for the Mach-E 2024 lineup, is the new redesigned e-motor in the rear. It's been developed entirely in-house, which means it's not only easier and more cost-effective for them to make, but it's also more serviceable. It's also actually in the Ford F-150 Lightning. And if you haven't checked out all of our articles and coverage with that, including taking the F-150 Lightning to a Tesla supercharging station, be sure to go to tomsguide.com and and while you're here, if you're enjoying our EV coverage, be sure to let me know and also give me some suggestions of what car we should test drive next. The rally's driving really smooth, but more importantly, really quietly. I'm hardly hearing any pickup from the tires, but if I were missing some of that sound, all I have to do here is enable propulsion sounds. And now if I try to push it, We get a little fed in sound right there. With one pedal enabled, you get regenerative braking. So when I take my foot off the gas, it'll want to slow down quite quickly. That means that when I'm driving out here, I don't even need to use the traditional brake. Only thing better than one screen is two screens. And that's what you get here. This 15.5 inch center display is great for seeing the maps on a large interface. I, there's no question about where I'm going there, but for when I don't want my eyes in that direction, I get this smaller display right in front of me. I get turn by turn directions. I'm seeing how quick I'm going. Bunch of other helpful information like the speed limit, my battery range. Speaking of range, the rally gets an estimated 265 miles. That is a drop from the 280 miles on the GT before we're talking about upgrading to an extended range battery. Debating touchscreen versus buttons, physical buttons, is a total can of worms, but I will say for climate control specifically, it could be nice to have physical buttons. That way you actually have some haptic feedback of you know how many times you have to press the button to get into certain modes. Whereas this, I'm just trying to like keep my eye on it slightly while I'm driving. I have my, you know, lane assist helping me. So in case I swerve a little bit, but if I actually had a button, I would know like, oh, I'm hitting the heated wheel button. I don't have to just guess if I've done it correctly or wait to actually feel the steering wheel get hot. My love for Mustangs goes back to when I was 16, just learning how to drive. And it's so cool that recently I've had more than probably my fair share of Mustang experiences. Just over the weekend, I was driving the 2024 Dark Horse Fleet, and that was race car level. That's not a practical car for me to just go out and be driving if I'm not actually, you know, trying to work on my racing skills, which maybe I will one day, who knows. Um, but getting to try out the GT and the standard Mach-E, you know, those have the Mustang flair. I think they do in their own ways pay respect to the Mustang heritage. But then when you bring in something like the Rally, I feel like I'm actually getting to bridge the gap between the racing dark horse experience, that nostalgia factor that I have, right down to the racing stripes on the front of the car. I mean, I love kind of the eye-catching moment. Every time we've been driving around now and we're seeing like the cherry red Mustangs, we're pointing them out. Now I'm get to be that person in that car with a car like the Rally. I wonder if the other drivers on the road are jealous of my racing stripes. Okay, obviously I care a lot about the cool factor, but of course far more than that goes into making a car purchase, and a rally car is probably overkill for anyone who has literally zero intention of off-roading. But the Maki -E Rally gets me very excited about what kind of innovations might be next for the EV market. Whether you're looking for something sporty for the city or just something that can keep up when you have something a bit more exciting planned, I'm convinced after these two days that Ford is not messing around here. But let me know what you think. Could you see a car like this being your next EV? Also, like I said earlier, be sure to let me know what car you'd wanna see us check out next. You can see more of our behind the scenes from this trip everywhere on social at Tom's Guide. And as always, I'm at Kate Kozich. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next ride.